All right. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to today's uh, monthly merchant training for Sound POS. My name is Cesar Rivas and I will be conducting the uh, the training. I'm the, the sales executive, actually. Um, you may have maybe uh, attended a, uh, a demo with me, perhaps. Um, so I actually conduct those, these demos. Um, I specialize in, in you know, in, in Sound POS, actually. So thank you again for joining us today for, for the session. Um, so before we actually jump into the actual training session, just a couple of household uh, uh, comments here, household items. Uh, first of all, there's a section uh, in the Zoom chat for Q&A. So please, if you have any questions, feel free to input them there at any time. Uh, what I'll do is, as I'm going through the different sections, I'll verify if there are any questions that came up and I'll go ahead and, and, and address them immediately, right? No need to wait until the end of the uh, the session for responding that. Um, these sessions can take up to three hours, depending on how many questions we get and so forth. Um, so, so I know that the instructors say I'll respond at the end of the session, but I can respond uh, at any time. Um, so we'll take a, a five minute break as we get to the hour and then we'll come back, um, kind of stretch your legs and relax for a minute. Uh, it is going to be recorded. We have a uh, YouTube channel. Just go to sound payments on YouTube and you'll be able to find this session in case you want to review and any prior sessions that we've also recorded. Um, and, and really the the premise of this session is to to um, to show you how, how to operate the POS, not so much to configure. We are gonna go over some, some setup information, some kind of get you started, but it's primarily for, for the purpose of, of how to operate the, the system. You may have already received uh, a user guide. If not, you'll receive it after the session. That also has very detailed instructions as far as, as, far as how to operate uh, the uh, uh, the system. Um, we do have some you know some resources available for you. Okay, we've got you know our tech support line, which is available. You see it on the screen at 888-263-5661. Uh, it is available twenty four seven, um, and we've got of course this. Uh, um, our, our, our email address as well, support at soundpayments.com. As I mentioned, we've got the POS user guide. Uh, and then we also do have some, some individual training. Um, the monthly group trainings, which are of course for free, um, they're listed on the right-hand side. Uh, we're doing today the June 12th one, but we've got one, it's usually on the second Wednesday of every month at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And we cover kind of the same, the same uh, uh, contents uh, for each session. Uh, but again, you, you can also review the sessions that we've done in the past on our YouTube channel. Um, with regards to you know our, our support line, they're there to help you um, with in terms of you know functionality issues, um, not so much in terms of how to operate the uh, the unit. Um, they're 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 more trained for trying to find out or, or figure out any any glitches or any any issues that you're having with the actual issue with the actual uh, um, device. All right. Um, so the first thing I want to I want to discuss on here is kind of the components. All right. We're, we're going to go over the agenda. All right. We're going to be looking at the system components, uh, you know, what makes up some POS, both the hardware and also the software. OK. As I mentioned, we're going to be going over some in initial configuration. Uh, we'll be looking at the discounts and pricing, uh, how you can set pricing and then the different ways in which you can uh, do discounts. Um, the system does come with a customer's database, so you can store your customer's personal data on there. Um, also, we're going to be looking at employee management, both from uh, function access, so you can have different employees accessing different types of functions, and also be restricted to accessing some specific functions, in addition to the time card feature that it comes built in with. We'll be looking at reports. Um, we've got reports that are on the actual terminal itself, and you've got some other reports that are on the web portal. Um, inventory, in terms of how to upload inventory, how to manage your inventory. There are a couple of ways in which you can keep track of inventory. Um, printers, the system comes with, mo most of the, the terminals come with a built-in printer, but the system is set up to also support uh, network-based printers, as long as they're they're using um, Epson printing protocols. You should be able to connect them to whatever network device you have, like a router. And then we'll be looking, of course, at the sales screen. All right. All right. So why don't we first start looking at the different components of the POS? Uh, so for those of you who have a, um, a, let me see if we got any questions. No, no questions so far. For those of you who have a 
countertop POS, usually it'll have two components. Right? It'll have the, the, the screen that's facing the operator, could be your, your clerk, your checkout clerk. Uh, and then you normally have a, a facing, a customer facing screen, which is depending on what unit you have is going to be your your payment device where, where the customer would input the credit card. Uh, these systems are set up also to use an external pin pad. So, you know, if you're, if you've got a setup where you've got a, a barrier or something like that, and and the 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 built-in, the one that's attached, the payment device that's attached does not work, you can also uh, utilize an external payment device that, that could be sitting outside of the, the barrier and it connects via Wi-Fi. Um, for some of the terminals that we have, we actually have two customer facing screens, like the E800. The secondary screen also displays whatever's being charged and also can be used for uh, some marketing uh, uh, some marketing uh, material as well, all right? Um, of course, these systems, you can attach a, a cash drawer. Um, they, they are compatible with a cash drawer. It's got the cash uh, drawer uh, portal. It's kind of a universal connection. Um, and then of course, you can also use a, um, a scanner, a USB scanner attached so you can I just use the, 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 the scanner to scan codes in and ring up items and so forth. And then, of course, we have the web portal, which is what you can use on your computer. This is browser based, so there's no need for uh, downloading of any type of an app. Um, and it works on, on any browser pretty much from Chrome, Safari, Microsoft Edge. And of course, if you have a tablet, it should also work on a tablet as long as it has a, a browser and a smartphone as well. So it allows you to do some remote management without having to be in front of the terminal. And almost anything you would do on the on the web portal, you can do on the terminal with the exception of running a sale and a couple of other things. As a matter of fact, there's some things that I find that are better to do on the web portal than to do on the terminal itself, simply because of you know the interface, you have a mouse, uh, and, and just the interface is a little bit easier uh, for certain functionalities, for certain maintenance items on the web portal, I feel, than on the terminal. All right, so so let's take a look first of all at the web portal. I'm going to go ahead and log into a, a demo environment here. Okay, this is a, a make believe um, reseller web portal, and I'm going to log into the store. The store is actually um, a convenience store. Okay, so let me go ahead and log in here, and then the first page, which is your your landing page, is kind of a dashboard. Provides some information about uh, transactions and things like that to the store. All right. Um, so first thing we want to do in terms of initial configuration, and you can do this again on the terminal, and I'll show you some of this stuff on the terminal, is setting up your taxes. And the way that your taxes are set up, you go to configuration here, and you're going to find tax. You got two components there. You got your tax rates, and then you got your tax categories. The tax rates is what's actually charged in terms of, you know, your local, your state, you have tobacco tax or any other tax that you may have. All right. Um, you can configure each one individually. Right. You set your rate on here and then you just save it. And once you have all the different rates that may be charged for the different products, then you're going to group those in tax categories. Now you can have an unlimited number of tax rates. There's no limit on here. And then you can also have an unlimited number of tax categories. But this is what's actually assigned. The tax category is what's actually assigned to the uh, um to the product, okay? You, you'll, you're you gonna assign the tax categories individually for each product. So you may have products that maybe have, you know, your local and your state and your federal, but don't have maybe something like a tobacco tax or or a luxury tax and so forth. Um, I have three tax rates assigned to this store. 10% uh, is just something that I created kind of to make it easy to calculate. Um, and then the other two are obviously your standard, which you can create as your default tax rate. And then a tobacco tax rate, since this store does operate with uh, with tobacco products. So to take a look at how this is grouped and how it's actually um, and, uh, configured, you just have to enable whichever tax rate it is that you want to be part of this tax category. All right. In this case, for the default one, which I've called tax standard, and you can put any name you want on there. Um, I only activated the local tax and the state tax. And these are the different rates, right? 5% for the local, 1.25%. You can change the order in which these taxes are also um, assessed on the products. And then you can even enable whether you want the, any of the taxes, any of the tax rates to be taxed on top of the, uh, the, of the regular tax, all right? 
Uh, once you've enabled and you've ordered it in the way that you want, you just save and close. And as I said, you're going to choose which one is going to be default. Now, the taxes are not going to be assigned to a product unless you actually choose which one. Default means that it's going to be your first tax rate on there, on the list. All right. Uh, if we look at the tobacco tax rate, it looks a little bit different because I have added um, the local tax and this ta the state tax rates, as well as the tobacco tax rate. I didn't choose to tax on any one of the amounts. Um, and I, I just left it in the same order in which they appear on here. All right. Um, so again, this is something that you can also do on the, on the terminal itself. Um, all right. And let's see here, and I'll show you that. Let's go ahead and switch over to the terminal. So I'm using a, a little handheld unit. It's the E77 kind of looks like a smartphone. Um, looks, resembles a lot, uh, a, an iPhone actually. Uh, it, but it comes with the credit card ports. You know, you can do EMV chip uh, credit card. You can do uh, your your magnetic stripe. You can do tap and pay. It just doesn't come with a printer because it's really meant more for you know um, for more portable port portability. Okay, so we're going to look at the terminals that I've got under this um, environment. This is a, as I said a um, a demo environment, and we're gonna I'm going to share the screen so you can see it. Kind of a little screen, so I'll zoom in. So this way you can see where the tax rates are assigned on the terminal itself as well, in case you don't want to do it in the, in the web portal. All right. So give me one second while the terminal hooks up. And I apologize. I don't have it beforehand because for security purposes, it actually knocks me out about every three minutes if I don't use it. So we need to actually activate it pretty much every time we're going to use it here. All right. So approve. And let me go ahead and zoom in so you can see the screen a little better. Okay. All right. So on the device, if you want to see the actual tax rates, you go to the inventory button that's here. Okay. And you have the same thing. Uh, you got your tax rates that are here. Okay. As you can see, I've got the same tax rates on here. And again, you can create all your tax rates that you want. Uh, and then you've got the tax categories where it's grouped right here. Okay. So we go to tax standard, you see what's, what's made up on here. But again, I, I really prefer to do it on the on the on the portal itself i feel that it's, it's a lot more comfortable to do it that way all right um so any questions about that please feel free to, to type into the qa section all right um next thing i want to um, discuss is your your employees right um go to pos pos configuration and here we go maintenance so you can create different access to different um employee maintenance and you go to employee employee user rules you can also do this on the terminal again and it's funny because this, this function i find that it's a little more user friendly on the terminal i'll show you that in a second all right so for example for the administrator and this is a role this is not the actual employee right you just expand these items here and you can see which ones you want to enable or disable if you want to give somebody access to specific reports or not okay um modify products things like that more more on the back office side once you've created the role then you actually hire the, the user okay uh users okay just put the, the actual position name so administrator i left as administrator stock rep and so forth also here is where you can manage your your time card right um, or even generate a barcode for your employees. You can export all of your um, employees here. Uh, give me one second. I apologize. Somebody's knocking on the door. Sorry about that. Um, so here you can actually print if you want a, a barcode uh, and export your employees um, for your time card details in Excel format. This way you can utilize almost any um you know any any payroll processing software will be compatible with excel all right and if we go back to the terminal itself okay let me show you where you would actually do the same thing you go under maintenance and then this is where you would create your roles and i say it's a little bit more more user friendly on this side because it distinctly tells you this is these are all only the sales roles here see they pertain to you know whether you can do tax exempt, whether you can modify a product once being rung up and so forth, right? 
edit a sales price and all, all that stuff. And then you have all the back end stuff under the authority tab, right? So same thing, if you go to the reports, these are the reports that you can enable or disable, right? If you go to administration and you've got stuff like inventory, you know, customer information and things like that. Um, so same thing, you create the role here and then you would go to the actual users. Um, and again, I just feel like here it's a little bit easier. Now, our system, a couple of things I want to mention about that as you look at the user screen, okay? Um, it's only going to require for the date of birth of the employee to be input if your store sells any restricted age products. In that case, you should be putting it on there because the system does restrict who's able to sell a restricted age product. And you can establish a global uh, um, store kind of minimum age requirement, right? Let's say you can have your, your employee needs to be 18 and over and your, your, your um, clients need to be 21 and over. But then you can modify that at the individual product level. If it's maybe a 16 and over or an 18 and over product, you can also modify that at the individual product level. The other thing I want to mention is um, our system does have the feature where you can require the employee to clock in before they have access to the POS, all right? You would just toggle this function right here, okay? And then this way, whenever the employee logs in to the POS, the first thing that's going to come in, come up is going to be the clock in uh, uh, screen, all right? All right, so let's see if we've got any, any questions about that here. No questions so far. All right, good, good. Um, the next thing I want to I want to mention has to do with um, receipt configuration. All right, so our system does allow you to configure your receipts to, to, to really at a, at a very detailed level. And again, this is going to be under you go to POS, right? You go to POS configuration, and you're going to see receipt configuration or receipt on here. Now, in this case, I feel like it's a little easier to do it on the web portal simply because our receipts allow you or our receipt configuration will allow you to add a logo. And, and you can do it on, on the terminal as well, um, but it's a little more cumbersome to upload the logo onto the terminal. OK, so if you do it here in the back in the, in the web portal, you know, it's a lot easier. You just click on upload and you'll be able to find your just navigate to your file a lot, a lot easier. OK, uh, other things you can do, you know, you can add multiple headers on here, um, arrange what uh, orientation, uh, um, you know, you want for the headers, how, how you want it positioned, um, your justification on here. Same thing on the footer side. All right. You can arrange to whether you want a barcode or not. If you're going to be using a barcode scanner and you need to look up an order, it's a little easier if you do enable barcode to be printed. OK. The ability to send email. So our system does allow um, you to, to send emails to, to your clients. And we actually email a PDF copy of the of the receipt. Uh, we don't do like a link. OK, now with regards to tips, because our system allows you to, the um, the payment screen allows you to enable it so that the tip can be added on the spot at the time of purchase by the customer. Um, you want to go ahead and configure it in a way where maybe the tip line is not going to print on the receipt. Now, if you don't want the the client to um, to select what tip they're going to pay it uh, on the on the actual payment screen, but rather you you want them to write it out on the receipt, then you would disable that feature on the on the actual uh, payment device, and then you would enable it here. Okay, and if you want to disable that feature on the payment device, we're going to go to um, settings okay you're going to go to configuration okay and then you're going to use here um show tip options on customer display so if this is enabled you should have this disabled just so it doesn't conflict because then it's going to be a little bit of a confusion right for the customer hey i already put the tip on the actual terminal screen why would i need to write it on here all right. So so again, you want to make sure that if you are going to enable the terminal, um, the, the payment terminal to input the tip line there, the, the tip amount there, then you want to disable it on the receipt. If you're not going to enable it on the payment terminal, then you want to enable it on the receipt. And then you're going to have to, of course, adjust it at the end of the day, which is another another um, option you can choose here. See, add tips at the end of the day. So normally when I enable this, I'll disable this and I will disable also the tip line on here. 
Okay. And you can see a preview of the actual receipt, what it looks like. All right. Let's see here. Come on, guys. Here. Okay. Actually, it looks a little bit bigger on here. Um, and, I, and I'll show you a, a PDF copy of the receipt in a moment. All right. All right. So let's see if we have any questions about receipt configuration. All right. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the product catalog. And again, it's, you know, the, the, we have the web portal because it does make it easier uh, for, for a lot of the functions. So let's look at the product catalog and looks at, look at the different components of the product catalog. The first component there is, of course, the actual product items. OK, this is where you would input your products. If you have a brand new POS, um, you can import your, your products in a couple of different ways. All right. You can actually use a template to input your products. We have a, a simple template and a complex template. The complex template would include attributes and attribute combinations. And attributes are unique um, modifiers for, for the items, such as size, flavor, and things like that. Our, our system does support what's known as an attribute matrix, which is a combination of, you know, maybe size and color. So again, they're unique modifiers because you, you can only choose one, right? You can only choose one size. You can't have the same item being small and medium or the same item being red and black, right? They're, they're going to be different. Uh, um, they're going to have to be chosen differently. And the system is able to keep track of inventory based on those uniqueness uh, and even change pricing uh, based on the uniqueness. And this is a really good use. I don't know if, if um, um, you're, you're, you know, you maybe you run a uh, tobacco shop and you sell vape. Uh, pens. Uh, those are a little cumbersome to input because normally it's one brand name with 20 different flavors and three different contents. Um, so it's a little easier to manage it through through the attributes. So just to show you what a, a simple template with data looks like, this is for a quick serve restaurant. It's an Excel format, of course. Um, give me one second here. Okay. Let me zoom out so you can see the whole thing. You can even add a picture on, on the template here. Okay, it's going to come up. So this is agedashi tofu. So it is fried tofu. You know, you put your price here. If you have, if you know the cost, you can put your product cost here and then it'll calculate your, your profit and gross margin. We normally recommend that you create categories, especially if you're not going to be using a scanner. If you're not going to be using barcodes, it just makes it a little easier to navigate on the actual uh, um, sales screen. And I'll show you that in a minute. You choose what tax category it belongs to. Uh, if it is not tax exempt, if you're choosing a tax category, then this has to be false, of course. And you choose whether you want to manage inventory or not. Okay. In this case, um, you manage inventory by the attributes, which are the unique modifiers I mentioned earlier. Okay. Um, stock quantity. This is just if you use what's known as a, a tobacco uh, loyalty programs. So it wouldn't probably apply. Um, you want to you also know whether you want the item to be POS enabled. Now, most items you're going to upload, of course, initially they're going to be POS enabled. But as you utilize the item, maybe you run out of stock, um, then you may want to disable it so it doesn't appear on the sales screen, but you don't want to delete it altogether from inventory. Just so when you get the, the new inventory, you just add how many you've got and you, you re-enable it. Um, show on on um, show on the, uh, on the POS um, menu is for things that maybe you do activate for the POS, but you don't want to sell. So like modifiers and modifiers can be, for example, topics. Let's say, you know, this item has ketchup. You're not going to sell ketchup, but you want to make sure that you're able to choose whether to add or, or remove ketchup from that item. Then you have to uh, enable it on the POS menu. Our system does support whether um, you accept EBT for items or not. And these are assigned at the individual product level. So you want to make sure that you're enabling EBT payment for what's allowed, okay? So you'll get to manage that. Um, you can also activate whether you're going to sell by weight. Now, when you activate sell by weight, and I'll show you this on the actual uh, web portal. When you activate sell by weight, then you get to choose what, um, what unit you want to utilize. Now, our system, if you use a unit that doesn't correspond to weight but corresponds to length, or corresponds to volume, it will also accept that. And that's what's actually going to show on, on the on the screen. This is whether the item is going to be of restricted age or not. 
Um, and if it is going to be restricted age, you can, like I said, at the individual item level, you can set, you know, the restricted age for uh, the uh, the employee and restricted age for the for the uh, for the uh, the customer. Okay. Um, also, here is where you would create an item that is a modifier, such as an ingredient and so forth. Okay. Um, okay, and if it does belong to a modifier group as well. Um, it'll if, even if you don't choose a printer, it'll it'll utilize the built-in printer. But you can also assign uh, network printers like Kitchen and things like that. Petro doesn't pertain to, to to POS; it's just another line of business that we have on here. As I said, you can also put a picture on here. Okay, so once you you finish uploading that, there's a couple of other things maybe that you would need to do, and then you just import it. Okay, you choose the file and just import it. Now. If you have an existing or if you had an existing POS and you're bringing the information from that POS over to us, um, your reseller should be able to create a map or a mapping uh, document that's going to identify each field in your document, which you've exported from the other POS to match the field in our template so it can import. OK, so that's the way that you would do that. But let's go inside one of the products on here so you can see what it looks like. Okay, it already kicked me out on the terminal. Okay, I'm gonna just go ahead and activate this real quick so I can have it ready. Let's go back to the store portal. All right, so um, so let's go into one of the items on here so you can see what the contents look like. All right, so you've got you know, your product name, kind of the same stuff you saw in the template, but of course organized a little bit differently. You got your product name on here, right? You've got, um, if you want a short name, just to identify it, maybe a little bit of a description. This is where you would choose the category. Okay, and again, we encourage you to utilize categories, especially if you, if you don't have a scanner. All right, um, uh, you can choose if you want to, you know, first in your category, second, third, and fourth, so forth. Okay, uh, so you can choose kind of the order that they're in. Um, you've got your your SKU field here, so if you do have a barcode, you can just scan it right in here. It'll it'll save it on there. Uh, secondary uh, code field, if you want to use a secondary code field on here. Um, this is where you would activate if you're going to sell by weight, and this is where you would input the unit, which I said, as I said before, you can use pretty much any unit. It doesn't have to be a unit of weight. And this is where you would either, you know, disable it if you run out of stock, but you don't want to delete it from your inventory, um, or if you don't want it to show on the menu because it's something that you do use on the POS, but it's not going to be for sale. And this is where you would then enable it, whether it's, it is ABT or not. And again, you know, we encourage you to utilize, of course, uh, you know, the knowledge in terms of what qualifies for EBT or not. I want to make sure that you don't get into trouble for, for you know, using EBT for something that's not allowed to be purchased with that. Okay. Then you've got the pricing section here. Where you can put the price that you charge. Now, I've enabled a feature called cash discount, which um, will will discount uh, the, the price of the item when somebody pays in cash. So the calculation is a little tricky as far as how much you need to raise the card price. So our system does it for you, but it asks you which price do you want to be able to input. We encourage you to do the cash price because it'll be easier to calculate uh, what the actual uh, cash price is going to be in the end. All right. Um, you can enable it, whether it is a tax exempt item or not here. Okay. Um, put what the cost is for your item, and then it's going to calculate your profit and your gross margin. You choose your tax category here. This is a tobacco item. It's a vape pen. Okay. Um, and then it should ca automatically calculate everything on here. Now, I don't have a price on here because I'm actually establishing the price based on the, the flavor and the size of the vape pen, which you're going to see in a minute when we go to the attributes, okay? This is where you would choose how you want to track inventory for that item. Now, you may not want to track inventory at all. You just choose don't track inventory altogether. Or you can track inventory by the item itself. So this is where you would put your initial quantity here. And also, you can you can establish a low inventory quantity threshold. We do have a pre-established report which shows you uh, which items have gone below the threshold that you established. So whatever you set on here, if you low, if you go, your inventory for that item goes below that number, then it's going to show on that low inventory report, which we'll, we'll go over in a little bit. All right. Um, but for this item, I've actually chosen to track inventory by the product attribute, which I'll show you in a minute. All right. If the item is a modifier, this is where you would activate it. So if this is like an ingredient, like ketchup, you know, like I said, sauce, whatever that may be, um, you can act, enable it here. 
And if you do utilize ingredients to keep track of inventory instead of the actual item itself, you can actually do it through here. Okay, so I don't know if each time you serve ketchup, it's two ounces and you have, you know, I don't know, 10 bottles and each bottle is, is, is 10 ounces. Now you've got 100 ounces of that. You can keep track of that on here. OK, um, you can also add modifiers here. You can choose to add modifiers individually. OK. Or you can add modifiers as a group. And I'll show you the, the, the groups that you can create on the system. Just a little bit easier because then it'll it'll gather all the modifiers for that specific group. And you only have to sign the group to the item and all the modifiers are going to be available. OK, uh, then you've got your printer. On here, where, as I said, you know, see, I don't have anything listed on here and it's automatically going to use the built-in printer. Uh, but then you can, you know, you can use a built-in printer, you can add the kitchen printer and on and so forth. All right. And then if it is a restricted age product. So for this store, I created 21 and over for both the employee and the customer. But as I said at the beginning, you can actually modify this if you want to change it to 18 and over. Or if you want, you know, a specific age, like 16 or something like that and over, that's fine. Okay. Here in the middle tab, excuse me one second, somebody's knocking on the door again, sorry. I apologize, I'm traveling and uh, they think to forgot that I'm actually staying today. All right, um, so on here you can actually add, this is where you would add the picture, okay? Now, you got to be careful with, you know, how, how big of a file it is. There, there are some limitations to one megabyte, okay? But this will help the, the, the store clerk, especially if you're not using a barcode, to identify the product by uh, by picture, all right? And then on the product attributes is where you'll see for this product, which is a vape pen, how uh, I've organized it, right? You've got um, the attributes on here, okay? And I've got two attributes that I've, that I've created. Uh, I created... Um, the flavor, okay, which is usually, you know, the, the way that the, the vape pens work. I've created the flavor and the size, okay? And I've got four different flavors. So if you go on here, you can see, and two different sizes. So if you go on here, you can see I got two ounce and eight and four ounce, all right? Um, and and uh, again, you can choose whether it's pre-selected or not. This is where you would add the new value, whether it's required or not. If you choose required, then you have to choose one of the flavors, okay? If you don't choose require, then it's not something that you have to choose. Let's go ahead and save and close. And then for the flavors, I've got these four different flavors on here. And again, in the case of the vape pen, both the flavor and the size is a requirement. So that's why I've enabled both of these. And you'll see what that looks like on the uh, on the on the sales screen uh, as we go along. All right. Once you create the, the the different attributes and different values for the attributes then you have to create the combinations right so in this case i've got eight different combinations and what this helps with is the you know i don't have a need to input four or eight different items on the menu i only have a single item and when i tap on it it's going to ask me which flavor and which size and it's going to automatically assign the the price that belongs to that combination okay uh, and it's also going to keep track of the stock quantity. And you can even set a minimum amount of items. Now, if, again, if you're using a barcode, you can actually input the barcode on here as well. And if you're using the scanner, then it's not even going to prompt you for that. As soon as you scan it, boom, it's going to come up here. In the case of this uh, example that I've set up, the vape pen, I set up a barcode, right, for the main product. So when you scan the main product, automatically it's going to come up with a screen where the, the sales clerk is going to have to choose the size and the flavor for the item. But again, if you have each item with a separate barcode, then that wouldn't even be a necessity. All right. Let's, let's see. We have any questions so far? We do not. Okay, great. So let's go then to the, the main screen on here and look at through the other items here. So categories, as I said, it's, it's a, a way in which you can group your different products, right? Kind of organize it a little bit and we do something unique with categories because there are three different kinds of categories on the system okay you got the categories that are displayed on the sales menu so as soon as you bring up the sales screen you'll see these categories listed on here okay you have the categories that are used for manual entry so say for example you receive a new shipment of stuff you don't want to add it to inventory just yet but you want to sell something and you want to know which category it falls under you can actually activate 
a, a menu category to show also on the manual entry option. Or you can just create a specific category for manual entries, okay? Uh, something like just delivered or something like that. So this way you're able to keep track in terms of your category sales and so forth. And then the third option is for pay in and pay out. So this is a really good feature if you sell lotteries and things like that. You can have the different lotteries. So when you do pay out, you can actually categorize. And then at the end of the, the month or whatever time frame you like, you can see, you know, by category, by uh, lottery, which, you know, how much you've sold or how much you've paid out for each one of those. All right. You can also choose a display order for the categories as well. Okay. Um, and, and parent category, you can choose it, but it really doesn't make any, any difference in terms of the display. All right. You can even beforehand choose for a whole category, which printer it utilizes. So if you have, you know, a food category, if you sell, you know, the gifts and you sell surf food, you can actually have the whole category of surf food automatically assigned to a, uh, a network printer. Okay. Um, we also have refund reason categories. Uh, and this was, was created so you can categorize why something is being returned, uh, whether, you know, you don't like the item or the item is broken. Now, with a refund function, whenever you activate it, the system will also, in addition to asking you to choose the category that it falls under, they'll ask you whether you want to return that item to your inventory. So obviously, if the item is broken, you're not going to do that. But if it's something like, hey, I didn't like the item and the package still looks new and you feel like, hey, this is something I can still can turn around and sell, sell to somebody else, then you should be able to just select, hey, yes, go ahead and add it back into inventory. Okay. Um, your modifier groups, this is where then you would group your different modifiers. As you can see, for example, for the hot dog, right? Instead of keeping, uh, and this store actually sells hot dogs. So instead of keeping the um, track of inventory uh, for the hot dogs as hot dogs, since they don't come packaged together, the bun and the sausage come separate, then I created a, a, uh, a, a, a modifier group called sausage and bun count. And then I keep track of the sausage and the bun as a modifier separate. OK, um, but you can see all the different components for uh, for the different uh, modifier groups here. OK, and then finally, product attributes. Yeah, before you add, you know, flavor and size, for example, to the vape pen, you have to create the modifier here first. OK, it's a very easy process. You just put the name on there uh, and then you can be beforehand. You can even create a value if you wanted to on here. But I recommend you do it more at the at the individual product level. OK. Unless you've got like, um, let's say that you've got five different kinds or five different brands of vape pen and they all have the same type of flavors, then yes. And then I would create, you know, for the flavor my, uh, uh, attribute, I would go ahead and already add the five different flavors on here. This way, when you add the attribute, it's going to come with those flavors already built in. Okay. All right. Let's see. We have any questions so far here? All right. Great. Um, so let's, uh, let's move on here. I want to go ahead and show you... I log me out again. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and show you on the terminal itself how to utilize this. Let me go ahead and log back into the air viewer on the terminal. Okay. So kind of all the same things that you saw on the, on the web portal, you, you'll be able to see on the terminal. Give me one second while it pulls up here. And then let me zoom in so you can see a little better. Okay. So on the, on the terminal, if you want to see the same thing, you just go to the inventory function that's here. Okay, and then um, see you've got all the same stuff. You got your products, your categories, uh, your attributes, uh, your modifier groups as well on here. Okay, um, so you can go to you know products, add a new product on here. Okay, right on the terminal, you got kind of all the same, kind of all the same information on here. All right, you got your you know how you want to keep inventory here, uh, your pricing. Um, you know, barcode, image, if it's sale by weight, if it is a modifier and so forth. You got your attributes on here as well. So let's take a look at, at the vape pen. Um, let's see here. Let me just do a search real quick so I can find it easier. And again, this is a, you know, little handheld unit. So uh, give me one second here. All right. So I'm going to search for all of it, and let's go to the vape pen. See, just so you can see, you know, what it looks like, especially on the attribute side, see? So you've got the different attribute combinations here, okay? You've got the different, you know, flavors and the different sizes with a corresponding value on here, okay? 
And again, this may look a little bit different on if you have a countertop unit because you've got a, a white screen. So this is going to be on the left and this is going to be on the right. But it's basically the same thing. OK, um, same thing on here. You've got, you know, your your categories, just like you do on on the uh, the web portal. Um, and here you can actually add categories that are going to apply to the pay in, pay out. So, for example, if you go to candy, OK, you can see. This is going to be used for pay and pay out. No, it's not going to be used for pay and pay out. Okay. That's where you would have all this stuff on here. Um, same thing if you go to um, your, your attributes, this is where you would add, you know, those attributes. You've got the size and the flavor on here. Kind of the same thing. And um, you got your modifier groups. This is where you'd actually combine the different modifiers that I showed you before. A little more user-friendly on the... Um, on the on the on the web portal, uh, I feel. All right, all right. So let's see if we got any any questions about all this stuff. All right, good deal. So let's move on then. Um, let's let's look at your your additional printers. So, and I feel like this is something that is, is sometimes easier to to manage on on this end because you can test it right then and there than to manage it on the web portal. But I'll show you both. Let's first take a look at it on here. And your additional printers are listed under settings. And then you just go to printer setup. Okay. So I've got the built-in printer, of course. And you also have the kitchen printer on here. Okay. Now, again, it has to be on the network, right? It has to be on the same network as your device. If it's on a separate network, it's not going to work. It has to be on the same network. The printers has to be, the printer have to has to be uh, connected to the um to the network device that you're utilizing, which is usually a router, okay? Uh, so it has to be, the reason why it has to be in the same printer, uh, same network, and I don't know if you're familiar with how networking works, is that what's known as the IP address, which is what identifies each item, this last number will change depending on, on what device is connected to that network. Again, you have to identify what, what the number is for the printer on the network and then input it here, okay? Uh, the port is usually 9100. Okay, and everything else has to be left, you know, ESC, POS, enable, print local transactions. Uh, and then you can do a, you can do two things. So you ping it and, and you're going to see that whether the printer responds or not. Pinging is a, a network function that's utilized by, by network specialists, which when you ping a device, it returns that ping telling you, yes, I'm here. And then a connect test will actually print something on there. It'll say, you know, something like test printer or something like that. Uh, and you'll see the paper print out. OK, and again, I'll emphasize that the only requirement is that the printer that you utilize uses Epson printing protocols. So obviously Epson will work. OK, um, but then you can use other ones like I've seen some in, in Amazon uh, that go by uh, Rongta is the brand name. They're like 80 or 85 dollars. So pretty, pretty inexpensive. All right. All right. Let's go back to the web portal so we can look at that here. And you're going to see that on their um, POS. Uh, POS configuration, and then you're, you're going to find printer settings here. And here's a little bit different because, you know, you're going to choose whether it is a label printer, whether it is a network printer. Usually this is where you're going to find your, your kitchen printers here. Kind of all the same configuration as you had on the other end. Uh, but, you you know, um, you can't do ping and things like that. A couple of other features that you can add on here, like open the cash drawer and things like that. All right. All right. So let's see if we have any... Any questions regarding printers? Okay. All right. Um, let's go on to uh, payment methods. So um, a couple of things regarding payment methods, right? Um, if you're going to be utilizing checks or EBT, uh, you have to actually have to go on the, on the web portal here to the bottom, which is configuration, go to settings, go to store settings, and then edit on here to make sure that you enable check or EBT first here. All right. And once you do that, then you're going to go to um, POS, uh, POS configuration and uh, payment method. OK. And you still need to, you know, enable it on here. So, for example, check, you need to go on here. OK. And make sure that it is active. And if you are doing cash discount, you can select whether it's going to uh, support cash discount or not. OK, um, uh, same thing with uh, EBT. You have to go on here. You have to make it active. 
okay? And whether it's gonna support cash discount or not, okay? All right, and then for the other item, same thing, you have to go, uh, if you're gonna accept, you know, debit or credit card, you have to activate it on here. And you can even create um, some customized payment methods like Venmo I put on here. Now the system is not gonna process Venmo, but um, when you choose Venmo, you still have to use the app to receive the payment. But at least you can keep track of you know how much how many payments you've actually uh, made or were have been made in Venmo. All right, on the uh, on the device itself, uh, you go to your settings. Same thing here. We're already in there, and you go to your pay method here. Okay, and then you can enable or disable or even add new payment methods on here. Okay, see I've got actually Cash App on here which I've not enabled. I'm going to go ahead and enable it now and save that. Okay. All right. Um, the system does support loyalty, loyalty points. Um, so two things you need to do. First, on the actual um, web portal, again, you go to your configuration, settings, store settings. Okay. And you edit your store settings here, and you're going to go to loyalty. And this is where you can configure the ratio between how many points are generated by a purchase and then how many points you need uh, to earn a uh, uh, a purchase. So, so in this case, 10 cents are gonna generate one loyalty point and one loyalty point will be the equivalent of one cent, okay? Uh, so it's a kind of 10 to one ratio, it's almost as if you gave a 10% discount pretty much if the uh, if the user decides to utilize the loyalty points and then you can see that on the um, on the portal if you go to customer feature okay you go to customers and i'm going to go ahead and select my favorite customer here call it testing guy okay on here you can actually see if you go to the account tab you can see all the loyalty points and you can actually look at the the, the history of the loyalty points now, the system allows you to adjust loyalty points if you wanted to. If you go to the store portal under POS, and you got customer maintenance here, and you go to the actual POS customers, okay, you can actually adjust your loyalty points. So I can, you know, adjust the value for Caesar and say, uh, you know what, let's set this to 100, okay? Save and close. All right, and we just made an adjustment. Now we go back to the customer pace. Of page and I've got 120 points for seizure, so it does allow you to do that as well. Um, all right, um, let's talk a little bit about gift cards. Our system does allow you to um, to utilize uh, built-in gift cards, but it also allows you to use some vendor-based gift cards. So you have to check with your your reseller to see which vendor they offer and see if it is compatible with our system. Okay. Um, with regards to pay in and pay out, so I showed you before uh, as far as categorizing, you know, how pay in and pay out would work, right? Uh, but but I want to show you on the actual POS, right? Um, should have pay in and pay out categories on here. There we go. Search. Okay, I don't have any transactions on their pay in and pay out. Let's look at the, the terminal itself. Okay, let me get out of the loyalty here. And go to the pay and pay out so you can see how it works. So I've, I've set up um, just to show you here on the portal. If you go to the uh, the categories on their catalog here um, for pay and pay out, I've actually got two lotteries. I got Mega Millions and uh, Scratch Off, right? So when you go to edit, you see that they're activated for pay and pay out. So when I go to the terminal and I utilize the pay and pay out function here, okay, I'm going to pay out. Then I can go ahead and choose a category. So I can say scratch off lottery. I'm going to pay $5. Okay. And you even have a notes field on here. You can put whatever you want in there, name, anything that you need to put on there. So now that's been registered as a pay in, pay out transaction. Okay. So if I go on here and I go back to um, scratch off, I should be able to see the pay in. Oh, sorry. I go to, where is it? POS, pay in, pay out. I go to the store. Should register. Yeah, there we go. So five dollars that I paid today for the the pay in, pay out uh, item there. All right. Um, 
And then one more thing regarding the initial configuration would be your cloud synchronization. Okay, so that's on the terminal itself. You go to settings. This is where you want to configure your cloud synchronization. Okay, so um, two things that you can figure on here is how often it's going to synchronize with the cloud. Now, as you run a transaction, just like you saw with pay in, pay out, the transaction data is transmitted immediately. There's no need to synchronize that or set anything there. But for, you know, for, for larger, larger pieces of data, okay, like if you made pricing changes, if you added inventory and things like that, um, those will only synchronize every five minutes every five minutes at a minimum, or you can increase. So if you have, you know, maybe a metered connection or something like that, you don't want it to be synchronizing that often, or you don't make that type of changes that often. Um, you don't want it to synchronize that often, then you're going to do that on here. Okay. Um, if um, also the system does not synchronize with this within a specific number uh, amount of time, um, it's going to give you like a little red uh, a flat uh, Add a cloud up here you'll see it. you'll see in a second right now it's blue because it has been synchronizing but you can also set that to a minimum of one hour or maybe maybe less often you know two hours three hours and so forth okay um, now you can synchronize manually at any time okay if you uh, just click on the sync button up here and you've made a change and you want to make sure that that change takes effect immediately or maybe you made a change in one terminal you've got multiple terminals and you want it to take effect on another terminal then you can do that as well all right. Um, so right now, if you go to the main screen, as I said, it's got a little blue uh, cloud because it has synchronized within that minimum time frame that we established. Um, but if it did not, this cloud would actually be red with a little X on there telling you, alerting you that it has not synchronized within that minimum time frame that's been established. All right. All right. So I think um, we're almost at the hour, 154, uh, 154 Eastern time. So what I'll do, let's go ahead and give you a five minute break now. OK, before we get started with the next session. All right. So we'll go for a five minute break now. No, we'll be right back.
All right. Uh, so we're going to come back now from the break. And we're going to continue with um, with discounted pricing. OK, so so take a look at a couple of things on here. Right. Um, actually, this kind of pricing, I want I want to take a look at it more on the on the terminal side uh, where, where it really is, is better managed. Let me go ahead and zoom out here. So I can log back in. Bear with me one second while I post back in. All right, here we go. I'll zoom it in so you can see the screen a little better. Okay. So three items that I want to go over in terms of um, pricing and, and discount. Okay, and this is going to be all under the maintenance function here. First one is called the global price change. This is a tool that you can utilize to modify pricing for your, your products, for your inventory. There are three levels at which you can modify products. You can modify products uh, for the whole inventory. You choose all items. You can modify products for a specific category if you like. Or you can modify product uh, pricing for only one item. Okay. Um, so we're going to, this this time we're going to choose the whole inventory. And they have three ways in which you can also modify pricing. So three different levels and three different ways in which you can modify pricing. You can adjust the price by either adding or, or setting a specific price amount, right? So let's say for the dollar store, everything is a dollar. Maybe you want to increase to a dollar fifteen for the whole store. Then that's where you would choose to set price to. You can also increase or decrease by percentage, all right? Second way is to adjust profit or gross margin okay it's by percentage of course all right or you can round the price either up or down to 0 0.95 0 0.99 or 00, 00 okay so again uh global price change tool very useful if you want to modify pricing for your inventory the second feature i want to mention regarding this uh this is more pertaining to discount is special pricing okay uh, for special pricing, you, you get to choose the item, right? And then you have three ways in which you can conduct the, the, the sale. Um, the first way is sales pricing is your standard, you know, you, a sale that starts on a specific date and time and ends at a specific date and time. Uh, and you can, you know, set a specific dollar amount price for that item or just a percentage off that you want to discount, Okay. The second way in which you can run a discount um, or a sale would be your bulk pricing. This pertains to, you know, two for one, three for one. All right. Um, now, in our system, once you've established a threshold for discount, which is a two for one, which means that, you know, once you get the two items, basically, you're going to be paying the item at 50 percent off. Uh, the system does not reset. Um, we're, we're in a process of adding a feature where you can choose whether you want to reset it or not. But this means now is that um, if somebody buys on a two for one item, it buys three, four or five items, they're going to be paying 50 percent of the price for all of the items. All right. Again, in the future, we're going to have a feature where you can choose whether you want that to be the case or if you want it to reset, where after they go past that threshold of two items, the third, the fourth and the fifth will go back to the regular price. And you can choose to either set a dollar amount or a percentage off. Now, the third uh, sale item, or the third way in which to, to conduct a sale, okay, is a what's known as time-based pricing. Now, this is like your regular weekly uh, discount. So, for example, in this convenience store that sells milk, uh, maybe I receive the milk shipment every Friday, okay? Uh, so what I'm going to do is that on Thursdays from 12 noon until closing, I'm going to run a discount on the milk. So that's the way that this works. So this type of a discount is going to be ongoing as long as it's st still on the system. It does not reset or anything like that. It will continue to happen every single week on that specific day at that specific time. All right. Um, one more uh, sale item I want to talk about is known as price level. Price level is how you would apply discount to groups such as veterans, maybe first responders, any group that you deem uh, you want to give them a discount. All right. Now, for the price level to be applicable, the individual has to be registered in your customer database. 
They can't just simply apply and, and provide the, the price level discount there. There are ways you can give other discounts at the time of checkout. We'll go over that when we look at the sales screen. Um, but if you want to give a, a you know a discount to all your veterans, they have to be in the system. And you can actually add them at the, at the point of sale um, whenever they're coming in to, to buy something. The system only requires you to input either their first or last name. So it's a very easy process. All right. Um, now, with regards to price level, like I've got a price level set for veterans. There are different ways that you can give the discount or, or a different level, so to speak. All right. Um, you can do all products at 10% off. For example, I'm giving a 10% discount on here. You can choose the full categories or you can even choose a dollar range. OK, so I only want to give a discount to products that are between zero and 25 or 10 and 50, whatever you want. OK, so it's another really good, useful feature for uh, for discounting. So, again, this is one that I would look on the, the terminal itself to apply. All right. All right. So let's, let's take a look at the customer uh, feature here. I showed you a little bit of the customer feature on the on the portal and knock me out. So let me log back in. This also knocks you out every once in a while due to security reasons. Look for the micro store here. OK. And then we're going to go under the POS and look for the customers, right? I showed you this a little bit before, okay? You've got uh, um, your customer database on here, which by the way, you can import. There's an import template. If you have a customer database, if you had another POS in, in the past in which stored customer personal information, you can also import that. And there's even a mapping uh, feature as well for the different fields, all right? Very easy to import. Um, you can also export your whole customer database. So our system, for example, for the loyalty uh, um, program does not communicate with the customer directly, like through emails and things like that. But if you're uh, a, a Microsoft Office user, you can just export all their information, including their email address, and then you can do a mail merge. Um, once you set that up, it's, it's easy to do over and over again. So this way you can actually email your customers without having to go one by one. It's actually even easier doing it this way. All right. Um, but let's look at how we manage our customers on, on the terminal itself. Okay. You actually have a customer's function here. Okay. This is also where you would manage your local gift cards. If you have local gift cards on here. Um, so we go to customers and I showed you the screen a little bit earlier before, but I want to, I want to mention in addition to loyalty, which is what I showed you earlier, also the ability to provide customers with credit. So in the first tab here, you've got all your customer information. And only personal information. We can not store any type of payment information on the system. Okay, that would go against uh, compliance. Uh, there's, there's some security requirements, which again we don't we don't deal with on the POS. It's also on the on the payment device side. So it does not allow you to store any any information, any any payment information. And and so try to avoid you know like in the in the notes field or anything like that storing credit card information. No, that that's forbidden. Okay. Um, but on here, you can store all their personal information, including their date of birth and things like that, right? You can even take a picture. And all the terminals come with a camera built in. So you can even take a picture in case you're worried about, you know, customer imposters or things like that, right? Under the, the account tab is where you're going to find what I, what I wanted to show you on here. So I showed you earlier the loyalty, right? You can look at the, the loyalty history by, by clicking on the detail button. Um but also you can provide credit. So this customer, for example, I gave him $1,000 in credit. This is a really good feature for things like um, uh, layaway plans. Um, I was talking to a, a, a merchant the other day that has a, a school um, and they finance the tuition. So what you do is you, you give them credit, you charge the whole tuition to that credit amount, and then as they pay it off, you see what's available and what's due on here. Okay, so it's a really good way to track, again, something like that or or like layaway, things like that, right? So you got a, I don't know, $500 item. And layaway, you give them, give them a hundred, five hundred, dollars 500 or $1,000 credit, but you charge that item to their credit account. And then as they pay it off, and, and they can pay it off in any way that, that you want. We, we don't have any pre-established payment requirements for the credit uh, feature here. Uh, you can see, and, and you can use any of the payment methods that's accepted now uh, to take uh, payments. All right. And you can also see the, the history. You can see when they've made a payment, when they've charged. OK, so it's a really good feature that's built in. You also have just your, your general history in terms of transactions uh, of customer address. 
So even though we're not, you're going to see it in the sales screen, even though we're not affiliated to any delivery service like DoorDash or uh, Uber Eats, um, if you do choose delivery on the sales screen, which you'll see later on, there's a feature to do that, um, your receipt is actually going to print out your customer's address. So easier for your delivery person to take there. And any notes that you want to you know, write down for the customer, this is pretty much a uh, freestyle uh, fill-in. All right, so, so I wanted to show you that, all right? Uh, I mentioned earlier also your employee management in terms of time card, okay? Um, you, you can, you know, um, manage it through time card here, okay? You can see your clock reports, you can see the time card details, or you can manage it, again, through POS, employee maintenance, and you got your POS users here as well, okay? Now, I don't have any clock in, clock out data, really. I think the only one that I would have would be here. I think if you go, no, actually not not even here. Uh, it would be my front counter individual, which is the one that sometimes I'll utilize. So see if I can go back um, to May 11th, see if I have any data there. Okay, so I do have clock in and clock out data here. Now, it's only for minutes, okay, um, like 3.43 to 3.44, because it's something that I utilize when I do a demo. All right, but it does have the data here. Um, and as I said, if you just go over here, you can actually export all of that. Okay. So front counter, this view here, their data. You got your, your barcode and so forth on here as well. Okay. Um, all right. So I want to show you that. You can see also the breaks that they've taken. Okay. See if they take a lot of breaks or not. All right. Uh, so up next, I wanted to... Um, show you your reports. So you have a, a range of reports that are on the terminal itself. Okay. You get your reports button that's right here. You get your transactions. All of these reports are available. And you can restrict which reports you want to make available, which ones you don't. Okay. In this case, because I'm logged in as the administrator, I have access to all of the reports. But you really have a broader range of reports on the store portal. Okay. I mentioned that you've got some pre-established reports. So you've got your best sellers reports, which you can do a query on the on, on a uh, time frame. You got your low stock report, which is automatically going to be pre-filled. All right. Um, you've got products that are never purchased. That again, you can do a query on a on a time frame. Um, if you email reports, the system registers who the report has been emailed to and which report has been emailed, and of course when it was emailed. All right. But your bulk of your reports are under this transactions function here. Now, transaction screen is actually more of a um, like a, a, a dashboard. OK, you can uh, filter what you want to look at. You know, let's take a look at the last month. For example, we're going to go back to May 12th. Uh, you can do by category, payment method and so forth, even, even by terminal. If you've got multiple terminals on here. Um, and this is going to show me. I've got 20 reports, 20 items on here. So, so this total pertains to those 20 items. But if I actually, if I've got a total of 26 and I go to 30, for example, now it's going to show me the amount for all 30 items out here. And again, this is not considered a report. This is only your, your dashboard. So you can see the different transactions on here. And you can look and go into the, the, the different transactions and see all the detail, right? So in this transaction, you know, it was a cash transaction. I can see what products were purchased on here. Just a vape pen. I can see how it was paid. Cash, if it's credit, it'll have the four di last digits of the credit card. Um, but here on the this screen, what's nice is I can actually even look at the receipt. Now, as I mentioned before, when we email a receipt, we email a PDF copy of the receipt. We don't actually email a link to take a look at it. And this is this here, you can see what the receipt will actually look like. Okay. Am I looking at it here? Okay. What the receipt will actually look like in the way that it was configured. So as you can see from from the sample I showed you yes, uh, before uh, for configuring your receipt and what it actually looks like, the logo is a lot bigger on here. You've got your header, your footer, all the things that I chose on here. Uh, if you choose, for example, signature capture, then your receipts are going to display your, your customer signature as well on here. Okay. All right. So I wanted to show you that um, with regards to the, uh, uh, the reports. Um, so when we go back to the main screen, for this uh, kind of dashboard for transactions, you're going to find the reports actually listed on the upper right hand side under either an Excel format or PDF format. And you have 
multiple reports that are uh, um, categorized into two types. You've got your totals report and your detailed report. And, and they all have, of course, a different level of information. So I want to show you the different reports you've got available here. You've got a report for transactions, for payments, for categories, for customer, for employee, tax, and tips. Okay. Um, and then, as I said, either a detailed or a total report for each one of those type of reports. So just to look at the transaction ones, the difference between details and totals, let me show you on here real quick. So for the detail report for transactions, it shows you everything that was purchased. Kind of that second tab that you looked at before under the dashboard. So it shows you everything that was purchased for that, for, for, uh, for whatever time frame you choose, right? And it doesn't matter if the item generated revenue or not. Like, uh, for example, Hot Fudge Sunday, it shows you, you know, what modifiers were chosen, right? And it doesn't matter whether the modifier generated any revenue or not, okay? Now, if you don't want to see a report that's going to be that detailed, then you would look at the totals report. Now, the totals report will give you a single line entry per transaction. It's not going to give you any information as far as what products were purchased or what modifiers were included in those products. Just going to give you all of the the financial data, the subtotal, the the, the tax. Uh, if there was any discount, there was any upcharge, there was any surcharge, things like that. And then it gives you your totals at the bottom. Now, if you need a version of this report which cannot be modified, you have all the same reports on their PDF. So just to show you the transaction totals report and what it looks like, it'll kind of mirror what you saw on on the Excel side, okay, with your totals at the bottom as well. But again, this cannot be modified now, right? All right. Um, with regards to, uh, to the printers, you know, we saw that before. Let's go into the sales screen now and kind of show you the, the meat and potatoes of the system. Oh, knock me out here. Okay. Let me go ahead and connect again. Now, Remember that I'm using a, a handheld unit, which has a smaller screen. It's more of a portrait orientation than landscape. Your your countertops are landscape. So you, you have a wider screen on there. Okay. You zoom in. So I say that because when you look at the shopping, uh, um, the sales screen under these mobile units, you have to toggle back and forth between uh, the actual menu. Okay and the uh, uh the, the shopping cart okay so we go to sales come on we go to sales on here so this is your menu screen okay and if you want to toggle to the shopping cart you click on this little shopping cart icon now again if you got a countertop unit this screen is going to be on the left hand hand side of the screen and then this other view is going to be on the right hand side of the screen so you don't have to be toggling back and forth this is just because it's a handheld unit Okay, some things I want to I want to go over on here. First of all, looking at the at the functionality on top. So you do have the ability to query or add inventory right at the sales point. Okay, um, if you've got a scanner, you just scan the SKU and it'll do a search and find the product. You don't really have to do this. You can just scan it right at the ring up. And if the product doesn't exist, it's even going to tell you, hey, this is, doesn't exist. You want to register it in in the uh, inventory. All right. Um, you can add an item here very easily, okay? Also for the customer function, which is the next one on here. Okay, this is, you can do a query. Now, when you do a query for the customer, you can do it, as you can see, by different items on here, notes, phone, name. If you do by name, for example, you don't have to worry about, you know, the first few letters. Just input three letters that pertain to that name. So, for example, the customer I like to use, testing guy, I'm going to look him up by inputting ing, okay, which is the end of testing, right? I do search, and because that string is included within the name, then the guy comes up, testing guy comes up, okay? It even has, you know, some other information on here so you can view, okay? So now we are under the testing guy profile, right? So I'm going to make a purchase under this testing guy profile, but I still want to show you a couple more functions on the top here, all right? Uh, add order. I mentioned before that we don't, we're not affiliated with any uh, um, with any sort of a delivery service, okay? Um, but you can identify an order if it's going to be delivery. So in this case, right, 
I already have their phone number on the system. I can choose delivery. Okay. And you can see it already has their, their address on here. So I'm going to continue with a sale. And I'll show you when I when I ring up the sale, um, the receipt's actually going to have their, their address listed on there. All right. So I'm already under their profile now. Um, I'm going to continue to go over the functions on here. And, and again, on, on your terminal, you may see more functions on the top. If you have a countertop uh, terminal because you've got the wider screen, right? You would use this button to clear your shopping cart. Let's go to the next screen here. Um, because our system is, is connected to the cloud, even though everything is stored locally on the terminal, everything is also stored on the cloud. Uh, and because whenever you do a transaction, it's immediately transmitted to the cloud. Any other terminal that's connected to your store will also receive that order. So the nice function there is that if you start a, fun a, a transaction on one terminal, you can finish it on another. Or if you run a transaction on one terminal, you can do a refund on another. So it doesn't matter. You just click on the search orders, click OK. And if you got any recent orders, they should come up on here. OK, you can also filter if you want to do a broader uh, range of uh, date range and things like that, or by type of order and things like that. OK, you go on filter, you can choose, hey, order type. Um, is it pickup, delivery, dining, takeout, and so forth? Okay. Uh, is it, you know, order all the orders from a specific customer, for example, things like that. All right. Specific start and end date. Okay. All right. Um, so we're not, we're not going to choose any of these orders on you. Just want to show you that. We also have this hold order function. So if a customer comes up to the cash drawer and they forgot their wallet in the car, you can actually tap on hold order. Now, in this case, again, you know, if we are under under this customer's profile, um, uh, it doesn't give me the option because I don't have anything wrong up yet. Uh, but if we are on this customer's profile, it'll, it'll save it under their name. And then you just click on held orders when they come back and you'll be able to pull it back up. You have also this discount feature. This allows you to provide discount for everything that's in the shopping cart. OK, um, you can actually uh, give a percent of discount. Um, you can also do, you know, coupon discount, right? Okay, percentage off. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. Now you can also do discount um, by um, by item. So for example, I go to candy and I'm gonna buy three Snickers or three Reese's peanut butter cups, right? But I only wanna discount one. You go to Reese's peanut butter. I'm gonna go to switch over to the shopping cart here. I slide to the right. I click on percentage. And you can give either a percent or a cash discount on here. Okay. So I'm going to give them 50% off for this one. Okay. Now, as you can see, I've got a 50% discount on this item. If I add two more Reese's peanut butter cups, now I'm not going to get a discount for these two. These are going to be at full price. Okay. I've got dual pricing on here. So I do have the cash discount and that, that's applicable. Okay. Just want to show you that. Um, if you want to entry something manually, You've got this category entry button here where you can choose what category. And again, uh, if you remember earlier, um, you can choose whether a category is going to be listed here, here or not. So you can create unique categories for your manual entries, or you can use the ones that are on the regular sales screen as well. Okay. A couple more functions on here. You can use your own vendor coupons. Okay. Uh, so if you, know, if you print them and so forth, you can use them on here. Uh, and then you can print ahead of time. You can do refund, uh, open your cash drawer, uh, see if the, this order is going to be tax exempt and so forth. All right. So just want to show you some of that stuff here. Okay, let me go back to my menu. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, so with that, I want to go ahead and um, go over... See here, run a transaction so you can see what that looks like on here. Okay, I'm going to first run a transaction on uh, the vape pen because I wanted you to see what it looks like when you've got multiple flavors and sizes and so forth. So, again, if I had a scanner and I scan the vape pen, in this case, I only have a barcode for the main vape pen, not for the different combinations of flavors and size. So, if I scan the barcode or if I tap on the vape pen, uh, icon that's on here. Okay. I'm going to get a menu for me to choose which one of these I have to choose. Now I've disabled the, 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 the age requirement just to make it a little bit easier. 
but I, I I was already logged in under this customer who's also of age anyway. So it would just bring up their, their birth date on here. But as you can see, um, you know, if I choose grape, I've got 29 at 1299 that grape two ounce. But if I switch over to grape four ounce, now I've only got 16 of these available at 1999. Or if I go to bubblegum four ounce, I've got uh wow, two of these available at 21.99 uh, for four ounces. If I go to two ounce, I've got you know, 31 of these available, right? So again, I'm able to track um, my inventory and also impact pricing uh, based on the combination of attributes that I choose. So once I submit, if you go to the shopping cart, then you can see, you know, the vape pen and you can see the flavors, bubble gum, and the size is two ounce. It's listed on here, okay? Uh, you can also use, you know, your, your, um, your attributes in a different way. Uh, let's say for on the gift shop here, where's my gift shop? Let's say I have a shirt that has a single um, barcode regardless of the size. Well, I can actually choose my size here. And again, it'll keep track of inventory separately. And let's say that there's a size that costs more than others. You can add the difference of size, the difference in price here. So this is going to add $10 to the already existing price of the, of the, of the shirt. So the shirt is normally $19.99 in cash. We add another $10 here. Okay. Now let's take a look at modifiers, right? Because they're different than, than attributes, right? Attributes, again, remember, they have to be unique values, such as size, color, and things like that, right? Um, and, and the way that I use modifiers here, I use it for, um, for surf food, right? I mentioned the hot dog. So the way that I keep track of inventory for the hot dog. So I use modifiers to do that. See in the bottom, I've got buns and, and sausage. You can have it preload. In this case, I actually want to input manually. Now it's taking one away from the bun and one away from the sausage, okay? But then you've got other things. So these are the toppings that it comes with. So if you want to hold anything, you say no ketchup. If you want to add anything, I want to add chili and I want to add relish, okay? The chili will cost me 50 cents. The relish won't cost me anything. Once I submit, they go to the shopping cart. Okay, you can see here, your hot dog, no ketchup, add chili, add relish, and of course the bun and the sausage. Um, if you have a kitchen printer and you have that assigned to the hot dog, this is the only component of the item that's actually going to print. Okay, right over here. All right. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and, and ring up the item. Um, you could save it or you can print it, all right? In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and, and pay for it. You have the different payment types. Now, if you use any of the, like the credit or the loyalty, what's gonna happen is when they go to the account, it's gonna tell me what, what my credit is, what my balance due is, and what I have available to see whether I can cover this expense or not. If I have available less than what's here, it's only going to allow me to pay that much, right? It's not going to let, allow me to exceed the maximum credit. If I choose loyalty, again, it's going to display what I have in terms of loyalty points, 8,087 8, loyalty points. And you're going to see that I actually can cover the whole expense on here, okay? Now, our system does support also, as I mentioned earlier, if you want to pay with one of these unique payment methods. Now you're not going to be able to process through the system, but you are going to be able to register that that payment type was applied to this purchase. So when you pull your reports later on, you can pull your reports by payment type and CEO, hey, I'm getting a lot of Venmo payments or I'm getting a lot of cash app payments, whatever unique payment method you've added to the system. Okay. Uh, and the system does support multiple, um, a tender so you can you can actually have different payment types for a single transaction now it does not split up a ticket into you know two or three different uh tenders that it will not do um but you can say all right uh let's do uh for loyalty i'm gonna pay ten dollars okay now i've got 46.45 left uh, i'm gonna use my account to pay another uh $20, okay? And then I'm going to pay the difference in cash. Okay? 
once you do that. Now, I'm not going to print or email or anything like that, obviously. So I'm going to say none. But I want to show you what the receipt looks like. And with that, we're going to go ahead and, and finish today's session. It's already logged me out. Let me go ahead and log back in. And again, this is going to be transmitted immediately, right? That's why I don't have to do any type of synchronization or anything like that. I'll just go to the store. And I'll go to the reports and look under my dashboard. And you're going to see that transaction already there. Right, so this is the one that I did today for 56.45. We can take a look at it. You can see that it's got your multiple tenders here, loyalty account and cash. And you can look at it on the receipt as well. So as you can see, that's that's immediate. Okay, you've got all your, your purchase items here, right? And then you've got you know, what you've earned, loyalty points, and then you've got how you paid it, right? So I spent $10 here. Spent a thousand points. I charged twenty dollars more to my account, and I paid the difference in cash. Okay. All right. So with that, um, I want to thank everybody for for attending today's session. Okay. Um, see, so yeah, I don't think I see any questions or comments on here. All right. Um, again, there's my email address. Feel free to shoot me an email if you need to. Uh, for any questions, any additional comments. And uh, thank you again for being part of today's uh, merchant trading.